So let us just uh, recall we had started looking at alternate way of describing uh, integration. So we define integral via upper sums and lower sums. So here is an alternative, alternative way of doing that. So given a function on a b to r and a partition one defines what is called uh, a sum s p f. So, in the sub interval uh, x i minus 1 to x i, choose any uh, point t i, it is normally called a tag, but so look at the value of the function at that point into the length of the interval. So, that is the area of the rectangle with this height. So, that is the approximate uh, uh, approximation to the area of the uh, area below the curve. So, this is called uh, a Riemann sum of f with respect to the partition p and one says f is Riemann integral integrable if uh, the limit of this as the norm of the partition becomes 0 exists and that means that given epsilon bigger than 0 there is a delta such that whenever the norm of the partition is small less than delta the difference between this sum and that number l is less than epsilon. So, one writes uh, this as uh, that limit of the sums is equal to the number l and that l is called uh, Riemann integral of uh, the function or we call it as for the time being we call it r integral of f. So, note that uh, the function f is not assumed to be bounded in this to start with because we are just looking at the value of the function at a point in between in the interval x i minus 1 to x i. Whereas, in the upper and lower sums you need to have the function to be bounded to start with. So, what we want to prove is that if a function is uh, Riemann integrable r integrable in this sense, then it is also integrable via the upper sums and the lower sums and the two integrals are equal. So, to prove that uh, we need to first show that if a function is integrable in this sense, then it is also a bounded function. So, that was the theorem we were proving that if f is Riemann integrable, then f is bounded. So, we had almost completed the proof of the theorem except for the last step. So, let me just go through the proof again. So, uh, since f is Riemann integrable by the definition of uh, integrability, given any number say epsilon equal to 1, there is a partition right such that see the sum s p f minus the number l is less than epsilon right. The limit of s p f is equal to l that exists. So, that means given any epsilon there is a partition such that they are close. So, we can take epsilon equal to 1. So, that means this sum is less than 1. Okay. So, let us take uh, two uh, points S i and T i and look at the sum with respect to choice of S i and sum with respect to the choice of T i. Then this uh, the S p f with respect to the choice is less than uh, this is with respect to T i and uh, there is a typo here, one should have a s i here okay. with respect to the choice s i and with respect to t i. Right? Each one of them is closer to l by 1. So, the difference between the two is less than uh, between the two of them is less than 2. So, in particular if I choose s i to be equal to t i then everything will be 0 except the first one. So, let us choose that that is what we had done last time choose s i equal to t i for all sub intervals except the first one. So, that all the remaining sums will be equal to 0 and you will get f of uh, t 1 minus f of s 1 is less than 2. And from here this is for every s 1 and t 1 okay, in the first interval. So, we can fix t 1 
and that means f of s1 is less than 2 over this plus f of t1. So, here t1 is fixed, so the right hand side is a constant. Okay. So, that proves that uh, up to here we had done it. So, we just fix now t1 and this uh, gives you that for every s1 in the interval x0 to x1, this is bounded. Right? So, it, it is bounded in the first interval and the same proof works for bounded in every other sub interval because you can choose si equal to ti in the second interval and so on. Okay? So, that proves that uh, if a function is uh, Riemann, integra uh, Riemann integrable in the sense of what we have done just now, it is also a bounded function. So, now uh, since it is bounded, one can define what is the upper and the lower sum. So, the uh, we want to prove uh, the statement that if f is r integrable, right, then it is also Riemann integrable and the two integrals are same. That means, the integral via the upper and lower sums is same as the integral via this method and both the integrals are same. So, let us uh, give a write a proof of that. So, let us first suppose f is integrable. So, what does that mean? That means that uh, via upper and lower sums. Okay. So, uh, integrable that means for every partition p of a b, if I look at the lower sums, that is less than or equal to the integral a to b f x d x is less than the upper sum. Right, and what we want to show so uh, we are given that is integrable with respect to this to show that f is r integrable and limit norm p going to 0 of s p f is equal to this a to b f x d x. Right? So, to show this, so let us take let epsilon greater than 0 be given. Right? We want to show that this limit is equal to this. So, then by this integrability condition, so by star there exists some delta bigger than 0 such that for every partition p with norm of p less than delta, see this, this integral is the least upper bound of uh, L p f and greatest lower bound of the lower sums. So, given uh, epsilon we can find a partition such that upper sum right minus say epsilon this cannot be the right so there is a partition such that this happens and uh, this is less than integral a to b f x d x is that okay because this integral is the upper bound right of u p f s okay so this uh, or we should say this is the uh, lower bound. So, this minus, so I should say um, we are looking at uh, this as okay. I just, um, integral of this is the uh, greatest uh, lower bound of u p f. So, u p f uh, minus epsilon cannot be, yeah, so this is okay. okay. And similarly, and L p f plus epsilon is bigger than integral a to b f x d x. So, 
So, that is now uh, note one thing. So, let us note one thing that uh, for every partition P, if I look at SPF, what is SPF? That is the value of uh, that sum at when you choose any point C i in that sub interval. So, this is always bigger than LPF and always less than UPF, right? Because this is the value at a point uh, uh, in the interval x i minus 1 to x i. LPF is the lowest value you choose and that is the upper uh, you choose the largest value. So, now let us combine this with this. So, it implies SPF is bigger than or equal to LPF and LPF is bigger than integral minus epsilon from this okay, the star. So, this is SPF is bigger than LPF and LPF is bigger than integral a to b f x d x plus epsilon. Is it okay? So, uh, if you call it 2, call it as 3 and call it as 4. From 4 and 3 this happens and if I use second, right, then upper sum is less than this, uh, sorry, this is minus epsilon, this, uh, yeah, this is minus epsilon and upper sum will be less than this integral plus epsilon. So, u p f which is less than integral a to b f x d x plus epsilon, right. So, that means what? That means S p f on the left it is less than this, on the right it is less than this, same quantity minus epsilon and plus epsilon. So, that implies that uh, this is for a given epsilon we have found a partition that means limit p going to 0 of S p f is equal to integral a to b f x d x. Is that clear? Right. So, what we have done is given uh, given that the function is integrable, we have the integral exists a to b and that is the supremum of L p f and infimum of u p f. Right. And we want to show that this value is also the limit of S p f the norm p goes to 0. So, to show that we have to show that given epsilon there is a delta such that whenever norm of p is less than delta this quantity S p f is close to this integral right between uh, at the most epsilon distance between them. So, now we start with using uh, from arbitrary we have go to the uh, upper and lower by looking at the definition. So, given epsilon find a partition p such that the upper sum minus epsilon is less than this integral and similarly the lower sum plus epsilon is bigger than that quantity. So, that is by the integrability by upper and lower sums right. And now, now we observe that the Riemann sums they are by you pick up points uh, T i in a interval x i minus 1 to x i and L p f is with respect to the lowest value of the function in that interval. This is upper sum is with respect to the maximum value. So, that is always true. So, now combine this to get the required thing. So, that says that if f is uh, integrable then it is also Riemann integrable and the two integrals are same. So, let us uh, prove the converse. So, what will the converse be? Suppose f is r integrable, the Riemann integrable. So, that means limit of norm p going to 0 of uh, S p f, every Riemann sum exists. And let us say 
call it a number a. So, this limit exists and we let us call it as a to show that f is integrable f is integrable and the integral a to b f x d x is equal to this number a. Okay. So, uh, when you want to show f is integrable, what does that mean? That means, we should show that this number a lies between upper and the lower sums for every partition. right? So, to do that, so let us start with because this is given to exist. So, limit norm p going to 0 s p f that quantity we have called called as a uh, implies given epsilon greater than 0, there is a delta such that for every partition p norm of p less than delta implies the sum s p f right is close to this limit is equal to a. So, it is close to a. So, let us say it is less than a minus epsilon and a plus epsilon right. So, that is the meaning of the limit is equal to a. Okay. Now, from this so, let us call this kind a star, we have to go to upper and lower sums right? to show that the function is integrable in uh, the other sense. Okay. So, uh, let us write this partition. So, let P be any such partition. P is, let us give some a name a equal to x 0 less than x 1 x n x n equal to b. Uh, as before, let us call capital M i equal to supremum uh, of f x, x in the interval x i minus 1 to x i and small m i equal to the infimum. Right? in the same interval. We have to go to upper and lower sums, so we have to write down all these quantities. And these exist, why do they exist? Because function is given to be uh, Riemann integrable. Okay. So, this uh, limit exists. So, by the earlier theorem, it is a bounded function, because f Riemann integrable implies f is bounded. Just now we proved that. So, it is a bounded function. So, these quantities will exist. Right. And f is a function uh, on the interval a b to r. So, f is a b to r. This is a partition. Now, we are not given f is continuous. We do not know that. So, otherwise, thing would have been very easy because this m i would have been attained at some point. By, but we are not given to be continuous. So, uh, we can choose select given that m i is uh, the supremum select some point x i dash belonging to x i minus 1 to x i such that this capital M i minus epsilon cannot be the supremum. M i is the supremum. right? So, something smaller cannot be the supremum. That means, there must exist some point x i dash such that this is less than f of x i dash. Is that okay? This cannot be. So, there must be point on the right hand side. And similarly, select some point x i double dash belonging to the same interval x i minus 1 to x i such that we have to go to upper and lower. So, that is why we are trying to 
maneuver, maneuver all these things such that small m i plus epsilon that cannot be the right on the so m i is the infimum so this plus something cannot be the infimum so that means this must be bigger than f of x i double dash. Now let us form the Riemann sums with respect to this choice x i dash and x i double dash. So let us uh, call this as uh, 1, call this as 2, so from 1 and 2, how do I go to upper sums? So I want m i times the length of the interval, so that is x i minus x i minus 1 summation i equal to 1 to n, that will be the upper sum. So here I multiply both sides by this number and try to add, so what you will get? I will get minus epsilon into b minus a is less than, so sigma f of x i dash into x i minus x i minus 1 i equal to 1 to n. Right? I have multiplied equation 1 both sides by x i minus 1 x i and taken the sum, summation. Here when you multiply things will cancel out and you will only get x epsilon times b minus a. Right? This is the upper sum. So, u p f this is the upper sum m i times minus epsilon b minus a is less than s p f. Right? This is the Riemann sum with the selection of the point x i dash in that interval. Similarly, from 2 you will get, if I multiply this equation 2 by x i minus 1 to x i both sides and add, what will that equation give me? That will give me the lower sum with respect to the partition p uh, plus epsilon times v minus a is bigger than s p f, right. Multiply by the length of the sub intervals in equation 2 and sum it up. So, similarly from 2 we will imply this thing, okay. So, let us call it as 3 and call it as 4. So now, let us look, upper sum minus sum quantity is less than S p f and lower sum is that property and here is uh, S p f lies between this and this, right. So let us combine these uh, star 3 and 4, so using star 3 and 4, what will I get? So, 4 says L p f plus epsilon times b minus a is bigger than, so let us uh, okay, uh, is plus is bigger than S p f and what was S p f there in star S p f was bigger than a minus epsilon, it was bigger than a minus epsilon, right. So, using star, so uh, that means L p f is bigger than a minus epsilon minus epsilon times b minus a. Is that okay? So, this term I take it on the other side is less than. Or if you like you can just uh, if you want L p f on this side or L p f plus epsilon plus epsilon b minus a is less than a. So, rewrite take everything on one other side that is a better one. So, this was using 
star and using 3. So, if I use uh, sorry 4, if I use 3 what I will get? So, using 3 now, so it will be similarly u p f. So, here is uh, u p f right minus epsilon. So, if I take it on uh, what is s p f? f s p f is less than a plus epsilon. So, here is this will be less than this quantity will be less than uh, a plus epsilon. Okay. So, that epsilon I can bring it on this side. So, that will be bigger than u p f minus. So, so u p f minus epsilon minus epsilon times b minus a will be less than this is less than that. So, this will be bigger than uh, so what are we getting s p f is it everything ok? Uh, this was L p f plus epsilon is bigger than S p f is bigger than a minus epsilon. So, everything on this side, so it is bigger than oh, sorry uh, I should have written bigger I wrote it wrong here right. This was bigger here. Right. And u p f, so that will be less than this quantity less than a. Is that ok? Uh, this I just rewrote. So, as it was this. So, what does that mean? So, implies we have got the required inequality that L p f plus epsilon plus epsilon b minus a is between a is less than u p f minus epsilon minus epsilon times b minus a. So, how do I adjust all these quantities now? So, I have got a number a between, between L p f and u p f plus some small quantities right. So, that small quantities are arbitrary. So, we can make it uh, how many of you are worried about this epsilon plus I can readjust those things back right. That is what we do in an analysis I can make it epsilon by 2 in the beginning epsilon by 2 times b minus a right or simply say that L 1 simply says it is epsilon times 1 plus b minus a anyway that does not matter is less than a is less than u p f plus epsilon uh, minus epsilon times one does not have to do all those cosmetic uh, things one can just write this as 1 plus b minus a. So, one simply says since epsilon greater than 0 is arbitrary, this implies that L p f is always less than or equal to a is less than u p f. So, arbitrary means I can let epsilon go to 0 if you want. Which sign? L p f is greater than a oh ok L p f did I make a mistake somewhere L p f is this plus is bigger than a Okay. If so, this was L P F is bigger than A is bigger than. that seems a bit strange should not happen uh, that means either I have made a
Oh, okay. I want LPF to be Okay, let us just go through the steps. This is okay. This step is okay because SPF is the limit. So, given epsilon, um, it is close to A. So, mod of SPF minus A is less than epsilon. So, A minus that is okay. So, this star is okay. Now, the MI is the supremum. So, M i minus epsilon cannot be the supremum, that is ok. So, there is a point with this property. So, 1 and 2 are also ok. So, uh, so U p f is less than U p f that is this. So, multiply this equation by x i minus 1 to x i plus b minus a. Uh, that is small m i. So, this is ok. So, in 1, if I multiply this is less than ok. So, u p f minus epsilon times b minus a is less than SPF. That seems ok. Ok. So, this part is ok, this part is ok, third. So, that means u p f So, L p f is greater than this is ok. Everything seems ok. What ok. So, let us see from here what are we getting. L p f This part gives me LPF is less than A minus ok. I think even that I think I should not try it this way. Yeah, ok. I think probably the last line I should change. Yeah, I think. I think this only we should change. So, let us rewrite what is this. So, L, so this says L p f is less than A minus epsilon 1 plus B minus A, right? This part. L p f, this quantity I have taken it on the other side, ok. Uh, uh, B minus A, right. So, I think this is a place where we should say uh, in this since epsilon greater than oh ok, or uh, we can write this and similarly the other one will be uh, A plus epsilon times 1 plus B minus A will be less than U p f, right. This part will give me this. Is it okay? Now, just compare this quantity and this quantity. Can I say L p f is less than this quantity and that is less than or equal to this quantity? Because this is A minus something and this is A plus something, same quantity, right? And that is a non negative quantity epsilon times 1 into B minus A. So, uh, that, so if I do that, then I will get L p f is less than 
a times epsilon into this less than a plus the same quantity less than u p f. Now, here if I let epsilon go to 0, so letting epsilon converge to 0, I get L p f is less than or equal to a is less than or equal to u p f, that is okay. Which one? No, no, I am using only this part. Which part? Is this okay? LPF plus epsilon times B minus A is bigger than A minus epsilon. So, is this part okay? Yes? I think, okay. Uh, let me uh, probably, I think this is the time to show you probably the a better way of uh, writing this in case. Let us look at. See, SPF for a uh, given epsilon greater than 0, you can find a delta say that this quantity happens, right? There is that number A is close to it, where P is a uh, partition. Uh, so, it has sub intervals i i, x i minus 1 to x i. Now, capital M i and small m i are the supremum and the infimum. So, that means what? I can find a point x i dash, say that x i dash right, is bigger than m i minus that quantity, right? because this quantity m i minus cannot be the supremum. So, there must be a point and similarly for the other one, okay, for the infimum small m i. So, now if I multiply both sides by the length, so multiply both these equations by the length of the intervals. So, I will get these two. Okay. And what is this quantity? So, what is this quantity? F f x i multiplied by lambda of x i. Right, that is SPF, right, and that uh, quantity that instead of epsilon uh, in the written proof, it is epsilon divided by four times v minus a. That so that is okay. So you get upper sum is less than SPF plus epsilon by four, right? Instead of that epsilon into one plus epsilon, what we wrote, okay? And now this combined with uh, this first one, okay? SPF is less than A plus epsilon by 4. So, this and this combined together you get upper sum is less than, so you get upper sum is less than A plus epsilon by 2 and similarly you will get the lower sum is bigger than A minus epsilon by 2 and now combine 1 and 2. What does 1 and 2 give you? The lower sum. Okay. The difference between the two upper and lower is less than epsilon. Okay. So, go through this proof uh, from the slides again. So, basically the idea is that uh, Riemann integrability gives you tags that points T i arbitrarily. You can connect it with the upper and lower sums by looking at the definition of m i to be the supremum. Right. So, that gives you that this number upper and lower is less than epsilon. So, it is integrable and A must be that uh, sum. Uh, 